part two of our West Coast road trip starts now and I decided to give myself a bit of a challenge. <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracted because there's a giant bird poo on the, the car next to me. Like a, anyway, I tried to give myself a bit of a challenge on, on today's episode. I'm going to shoot the whole road trip from here in San Diego to San Francisco, which is two days of travel on one lens and no filters. So I'm gonna just use the 35 millimeter RF F1.8 for everything I do. And I think it'll be fun. San Diego was awesome, but honestly, I'm looking forward to heading north. Sure, the sun's great down here, but I want some big seas and wild roads. Unfortunately, the only wild we got today was being stuck in LA traffic. Still, we made it to Santa Monica by early afternoon and managed to squeeze the shutter for a couple touristy images at the pier. So when I did Route 66 a while ago, we had this rule that you have to stay right on Route 66. You can't cheat, can't take shortcuts, even if it means getting stuck in LA traffic. And so we thought we'd make it to Pismo Beach by sunset tonight, but we were driving through like the suburbs of Southern LA and then LA itself on, on Highway 1 on the Pacific Coast Highway for like two hours just stuck. So we're really, really late. Uh, we did get a stop in at Santa Monica Pier and then now somewhere north of Malibu. I'm not actually sure where we are, but we still got like three hours to go until Pismo Beach. So that's the plan for tonight. The thing about a photo challenge is I think I tend to take photos that I'd otherwise miss. Like this image of Jody backlit on the lifeguard hut. The sun set as we pushed north along the beach near Ventura. Eventually, we got to Pismo Beach after dark. And after spending the night in the Looney Tune town, I caught an early alarm clock to head to my sunrise location. Okay, so it's morning and I've driven just up to Morrow Beach because I've never photographed this. I've photographed Pismo Beach a bunch of times. And I thought it'd be cool to come here. And again, I'm shooting only the 35 millimeter, no filter. I am allowing myself to use my tripod though. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've had so many questions on my channel being like, I want to travel, I want to take photos, but I don't want to carry a massive kit. And I kind of want to prove that you don't need a massive kit. You can kind of do everything with like a 24 millimeter prime or a 35 millimeter prime. I love my 35 millimeter prime. It's one of my favorite lenses. It's small, it's sharp. It's great for basically any kind of photography. And I mean, the best part yet is I have it on my body right now, not in my bag either. So it's in my pocket. I can fit a full frame, although it's a little bit sticky, a full frame Canon R 35 millimeter in my jacket pocket. And having that ability is so nice and convenient. Basically every photographer ever has spit the cliche that the best camera is the one that you have on you. And cliche or not, that's so true for travel photography. If you're not willing to lug it around, it doesn't matter if it's a $4,000 DSLR or a $500 pro zoomer camera. If a camera fits in your pocket, you'll probably take it with you everywhere. And in travel, you want a camera you'll take with you everywhere. There's definitely some nice like simplicity to having just one fixed focal length prime lens for travel photography. It allows you to narrow down your vision on the world. When I'm running around looking for compositions with all my lenses, I'm looking for everything. When I have just a 35 millimeter, I'm obviously looking for things that'll only look good at 35 millimeters. So it offers that simplicity. It, it, it decomplicates and declutters your photography composition making. So. Yeah, it's actually quite nice this morning. Oh, and the light's quite nice this morning as well. There's some pink starting to show in the sky behind this rock. My legs are killing me, uh, but I'm trying to stay in the frame. 
And, uh, and I've got this nice reflection on this water here. I'm bracketing. I'm taking one photo for like the foreground and one photograph for the sky. And if I need to, I'll blend them together later. And now that I think I've got this photo, I think I'm gonna go to the waterfront and see if I can get something different. If you're curious, no, I didn't end up using the bracketed photos. Instead, over in Lightroom, I just used a digital grad filter to remove one stop from the sky. I think it worked out okay. And luckily, since I'm not using filters, it was still early enough in the morning to not use an ND filter to get a slightly slower exposure. I said to myself this morning I should just put my waterproof socks on and just walk into the sea if I do that. And I was like, ah, I'm not gonna get my feet wet. And then I got hit by a swell up to my knees. <laughs> so I'm totally, totally, totally soaked. And uh, yeah, the girls will probably appreciate having, uh, having me with my stinky, stinky wet feet and shoes the rest of the drive up to San Francisco. But I think I got a couple photos this morning. I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, yeah, it's time to meet up with the girls again and hit the road. Fun fact, wet shoes smell. Like, really, really bad. So I'm not gonna act like I would ever travel with just a 35 millimeter prime lens or any prime lens, to be honest. There's certain things you just can't photograph if you only have a certain lens or a certain fixed length. For example, we're now at the elephant seals, at the elephant seal viewing area here, and there's no way I could get a good photo of an elephant seal at 35 millimeter. But for me, that's actually kind of a bit of an advantage. It means I can't photograph them, so instead, I'll just enjoy them instead. And uh, that's part of the fun too. Unintentionally, having a fixed focal length means that you're limited in what you can shoot, so there's less pressure to make a photo. You can sit and enjoy these strange looking mammals living their awkward lives. Then, if you see something that works with your lens, by chance, photograph it. And sure, you can't photograph the wildlife as well, but you might allow yourself a moment of stress-free travel. We continued north along the coast, and I managed a couple snapshots of some pretty classic locations in Big Sur. And where the landscape was too big for my 35mm, I stitched a pano. As we neared San Francisco, we stopped at Fisherman's Wharf in Monterey. Then, we chased the coastline until the sun started to set. It's sunset, and as we're touristing, uh, we just pulled off on the side of the road for a sunset because it's sunset. And uh, I don't know where we are, but it's kind of liberating just taking pictures. You know, I have the 35 millimeter. I'm not allowed to use filters, so there's not a lot of decisions I can make other than composition. So the views that way, I'm just gonna take a picture and then maybe go for a little bit of a walk to see what else we can see. But yeah, sunset with the 35 millimeter, hopefully some photos. So somehow I ended up at the beach. I was location scouting along the cliff and I just couldn't find an image clean enough, one that I liked. And I just kept moving and moving and moving and somehow I ended up down at the beach just before the sun goes down. And immediately upon coming down to the beach, there's these three rocks that make just a perfect, perfect foreground. The rule of odds set up perfectly. I just kind of need a big wave, like I think is coming now, to reach the third rock. Ah, not quite. And I think this will really work. I do, though, 
Wish I had that wider angle. I wish I had 15 millimeters to get the whole bend in the beach. And regardless, a beautiful spot. I honestly don't understand why people photograph the same locations over and over again on the west coast here because literally you can just pull over anywhere on the coast and there's an awesome image. Yeah, I think you can basically stop at any pull out along the coast in California and make a good photo. This state has so many incredible locations. We're only halfway up and I've already marked my map with about a dozen locations I need to come back to and photograph. This one, Greyhound Rock County Park, turned out to be a lucky find. We literally just stopped here at random. Okay, so I'm leaving this spot. Uh, it was cool actually. I do wish I had other lenses and filters. I don't know why I did this to myself today. I kind of wanted to prove that you can make great photos using just one fixed lens in travel that you don't need to travel with a massive kit like I do. That being said, you are definitely going to feel limited at times if you travel with just a 24 millimeter or a 35 or a 50 or something like that, you're going to feel limited. And sometimes that limited nature is going to help you. You're going to make better street photos or you're going to make better photos of a certain landscape just because you can kind of narrow down your vision and your compositions and there's other times you're going to feel limited. So there's trade-off. Sure, it would be nice traveling with just this. But as a professional, I can't really do that. So it was fun for the day and a half I did it. I don't think I'll do it again. Um, but I will be doing photos again on this road trip. This West Coast road trip is really only starting. We're heading all the way to Portland. So it should be fun. I hope to see you on the next couple episodes. Peace.